The C919 and MC21 projects in China and Russia, respectively, are designed to produce their own narrow-body passenger aircraft. This segment is both profitable and in high demand in their respective countries, and it also enables them to operate independently of Western alternatives. This review is not merely a comparison of specifications and figures. It also examines which of these newcomers will rise to the skies at a faster pace and who will eventually catch up to the Western Titans. The C919, a project developed by the state-owned Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, COMAC, is acquiring momentum at a rapid pace. They recently established offices in Singapore and Hong Kong, indicating their commitment to becoming a significant factor in the international market. At present, the C919 is purely operating domestic routes. However, this is likely to be a temporary restriction as evidenced by COMAX actions. The Russian MC-21, a proposal by Irkut Corporation, was created as a competitor to the Boeing 737 MAX and the Airbus A320neo. Initially, it depended on Western technology, but it is now compelled to adapt rapidly as a result of sanctions, much like the C919, despite its high expectations. The Sukhoi Superjet 100, which was launched prior to both, was unable to achieve its objectives due to the grave realities of the situation. The aircraft's reputation was tarnished by a number of technical issues and service problems, which hindered any international success. Nevertheless, it did contribute to the development of local production and established the foundation for the MC-21. As mentioned, the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320 are the primary competitors of the C919 and MC-21, both of which are narrow-body aircraft. Nevertheless, their ranges are distinct. The C919 is capable of traveling 4,075 kilometers, whereas the MC-21 can travel up to 6,400 kilometers, thereby bringing it closer to the Airbus A321 and providing the Russian aircraft with an advantage for longer routes. Depending on the configuration, the C-99 can accommodate up to 168 passengers. There are two variants of the MC-21, the MC-21-200, which can accommodate 163 passengers, and the MC-21-310, which can accommodate 211 passengers. Therefore, the Russian airliner is particularly well-suited for carrying large numbers of passengers on medium to long routes, as it has a significant capacity advantage, particularly in the 310 Dash version. This is the point at which the situation becomes intriguing. At its inception, the Chinese C919 was a project that was heavily dependent on Western technology, such as engines from CFM International and avionics from Honeywell. Nevertheless, in order to mitigate its dependence on foreign technology, China initiated the development of its own components following the introduction of import restrictions. At present, the C919 is still significantly dependent on Western suppliers, which is a weakness. The MC21 was initially intended to be an international project, and the prototype models also relied on Western components. Nevertheless, sanctions have resulted in Russian aviation's shift to complete independence. The MC-21's launch has been postponed due to the use of Russian avionics and domestic PD-14 engines, which enhance its autonomy. This trial by fire was previously experienced by the Sukhoi Superjet 100. Initially, the SSJ-100 contained numerous foreign components. However, sanctions necessitated a similar transition to domestic production. In addition to complicating and increasing the cost of production, this contributes to the progress of technology and infrastructure, which will undoubtedly be advantageous to the MC-21. In 2008, the Sukhoi Superjet 100 was introduced with significant ambitions. However, the project was soon confronted with major obstacles, including high operational costs, frequent breakdowns, and maintenance issues. The initiative achieved success primarily in the domestic market, as its international expansion was unsuccessful. Highlighting the vulnerability of import dependency in global manufacturing, the Superjet experience was a valuable lesson. The MC-21 has been in development since 2007, but its progress has been impeded by sanctions and the transition to domestic components. The project is making steady progress and is preparing for large-scale production, despite the fact that this delayed its launch.
Russian manufacturers are now actively engaged in the development of domestic component production for the MC-21. The C919 is a relatively young project, having been initiated in 2008, and it is remarkably advancing at a faster pace than the Russian MC-21. China's objective is to expedite the entry of the C919 into the international market through substantial investments and a sophisticated supply chain. Currently, the aircraft is operating domestic routes. However, it is preparing for international expansion due to the expanding infrastructure in foreign countries, such as Singapore and Hong Kong. At first assessment, the C919 and MC21 appear to be on similar paths as they are both pursuing independence from the West and are focusing on domestic and international markets. The C919 has the potential to penetrate the global market at a faster pace as a result of government support and China's aspiration to become a dominant aviation power. The MC-21 is built on a solid foundation of localized technology and the lessons learned from the Superjet experience, despite its lengthy journey. The MC-21 could also establish itself as a leader if the project is able to accomplish service and reliability levels that meet international standards. Six MC-21 aircraft are scheduled for serial production and delivery to Aeroflot in 2024. COMAC anticipates the production of 30 units of the C-99 this year, with an additional 50 units in the final assembly stage in September 2024. Currently, the C-919 and MC-21 are two formidable contenders for the position of eastern rivals to Boeing and Airbus. The Russian initiative has demonstrated that it is feasible to create one's own technology when it is not feasible to acquire the most advanced Western technology. The MC-21's adaptability and shift toward domestic technology are its strengths, while the C919 benefits from government investment and speed. Now, which of the above two projects do you think is superior in terms of its objective, in your opinion? Let us know in the comments. Please like and share our videos and subscribe to our channel. Please also take membership of our channel to encourage us.